Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and this time I'm coming at you with a review. A few people wanted me to do this because my good friend Michael Keen had gotten me this for my birthday. He pre-ordered it and arrived. This is the Blu-ray DVD combo pad, which has the extended cut as well as the theatrical cut of A Good Day to Die Hard. Now, I don't know if I should talk about the movie itself, or I should talk about the Blu-ray first, but I watched this movie again. Now, the thing about my reviews is pretty much every review I've done is how I honestly think on a movie. And it's what I still think on a movie. I'm the same guy that still enjoys Cowboys and Aliens and Green Lantern, and I still don't like Dark Knight Rises and Machete. I still don't like Predators and Avatar, but I still enjoy Skyline. I don't think I reviewed that. I don't. I still enjoy Battle Los Angeles and Dread 3D and The Raid Redemption. Yeah, I still and Ninja Turtles 3 is still one of the weirdest guilty pleasures for me, and I still, you know, I don't like that film. Even though that's one of those few films that I liked when I first saw it. But time changed, and you saw me rant on that. There's been a few times where I've reviewed something, and then later on I've changed my mind on. Spendables 2. When I first reviewed that, I said that it was okay, that I don't know if I hate it. Now you know that I was, in fact, really disappointed in that film. Transformers 3. Because that's a review I tried to review like three, four times and couldn't. Cop Out, I will fully admit. The first time I saw Cop Out, I liked it. Second, my, second time I saw Cop Out, I wanted to puke. I know, I know, I know. Uh, Spinnables 2, Cop Out, Transformers 3. Hmm, what else was there? I mean, yeah, there's been films that you change your mind on, like that CGI Ninja Turtle movie. Hell, I remember I didn't review the film. I don't think I reviewed the film yet, but maybe I did. Uh, Kurt Russell's Soldier. The very first time I saw it, I liked it. Then this time went on, I'm like, nah. Then I saw it again, and I liked it again. But as for the ones I reviewed, pretty much all the reviews, I still... 100% that's my thoughts on. And again, those are the few Spendables 2, uh, Trans Transformers 3. I hope I say Transformers. I don't mean, I hope I didn't say Transporter 3. Because Transporter 3 was always a piece of shit. If I did, I probably, I meant Transformers 3. I'm pretty sure I said but uh, This is another one of those that I don't hate the film, but. At best for me, it's a time waster. And seeing this film for a second time, I can really, really see why people hated this film. Compared to the first three films, holy shit. Even compared to Live For Your Die Hard, you know, watching those films and then watching this, I don't hate the film. But, yeah, this, this is a disappointment. It is. It, it ranks up the, with the, you know, the Expendables 2, Transformers 3. That you know, These were films I realized I looked forward to. And then I kind of went here. But this one I was more positive on my review. And the review's still up. I'm not taking it down. because That's why I honestly did. It, it, this was kind of tough to sit through the second time around. And maybe I'll get to that. But let me first get on this Blu-ray. This extended cut is bullshit. This film, it's a couple minutes longer. I have no idea what the fuck they put back in here. Someone said that the car chase was extended a bit. I didn't notice. There's, there's two things I did notice. One, they took out shit. They took out Mary Elizabeth Winstead scenes at the beginning and the end of the movie. And also the scene where she calls her father, John McClane, during the car chase. 
Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winston is entirely taken out. I don't know why she was not the... I don't know why. I really don't. So they took her out. The only thing I could notice that was added back in was in the beginning when you first see John McClane shooting. Uh, this I like this little bit of business where it's more a little bit more emotional when he finds out and he shoots at the gun range and it's much more emotional. He's like, God damn it! God damn it! And it shows a little emotional. Like he's angry and a little bit glassy-eyed. I'm like, why wasn't that in the movie? The deleted scenes are really not much, except one, which I'm like, again, why they take this out? There's another fight scene. And no, it's not with the big guy at the end. This is when they're looking at the trunks of the car. They find the weapons. They find a guy, and Jai Corney and Bruce Willis fight these thugs. And if you see one of the trailers, you see a scene where like, it seems like Bruce Willis punches a guy. That's in this little little fight scene that they cut out, which I don't know why they cut that out. But no, you know when you see the trailer, you saw sort of those uh, alternate tapes that you didn't see in the movie? That's not in the extended cut. So the extended cut, I know my friend Effie was taught to me, don't worry about the extended cut. I mean, the theatrical cut is, you know, just... Because I don't know what the hell else they had back in. It's not violence. It's not harsh language. Because I didn't fucking notice any of it. I really didn't. I didn't know the differences. You can feel free to type down what the exact differences were. I tried to look it up. I couldn't fucking tell. Except those little bits that I mentioned. And in that little extended fight scene, that's not in the extended cut. It's in the just the separate deleted scenes portion. The only bit in the extended cut I noticed was Mary Elizabeth was just taken out, and that little bit at the beginning where he yells "God damn!" and you see a little bit of a little bit of emotion on Bruce Willis's face. That's the only two differences I know is in the extended cut. And the film ends with, you know, the shot of Chernobyl. It doesn't have Mary Elizabeth Winstead and them at the airport and stuff. So I don't know what the hell else is extended. I have no idea. The picture quality for a brand new film is half-assed because I... For those who have seen this, tell me if I'm wrong. Did you notice a lot of grain? Like, pixelation grain shit on this? I swear, there are times where, especially when they get in the Chernobyl scene, and there's, like, the scene where they find the, the, the muscle guy. It's, you know, the scene, which I like this scene, where they push, there's these gas lines, and they push it, and they, they shoot it, and it has a big fireball, and Bruce Willis is like, what the hell, we're in those grenades? That scene, I swear, there's a lot of, like, grain. Like, pixelation grain. I'm like, why? This is a brand new film. Someone said that it was shot in 35mm. I don't know if that's the case. but The picture quality is not as pristine as it should be. I shouldn't be seeing that much fucking grain pixelation. I don't know what it was. Just Maybe I'm the only one, but I swear. Now, features, it has a bit of features. It has Making It Hard to Die, which is an hour-long making of. Which, really enough, you don't see a lot of Bruce Willis talking about the film. Really enough. But it goes pretty in-depth on the making of the film. It, doesn't talk about, it does not talk about the genesis, like how it came about, but... It talks about, you know... Some of the stuff, I, like I said, Time Waster, because I do like some of the action scenes... The mixture of practical, some practical effects, and seeing how that was done. You have some actual stuntmen. Others, two of a kind, back in action, little features. Anatomy of a car chase. This is almost half an hour long about that car chase, and I'll get to that more because John Moore is a fucking hack, which I wish. I, John Moore, never direct a film ever again. Never, ever, ever. Please retire from. Planet Earth. Commentary is centered only by director John Moore and first assistant director Mark Cartone. John Moore, go fuck yourself. Uh, but yeah, uh, bottom line, this is extended cut. Just watch the fucking theatrical cut. The extended cut doesn't do anything. It instead 
And if it added shit, I, did, I don't remember what the other shit, it's longer, because they took out the Mary Elizabeth Winstead scenes, and then the film's like three, four minutes longer, I don't know what the fuck they added in. There might have been one more little scene with Cole Hauser, maybe, and I don't fucking remember what the hell else. I mean, he's got a lot of features. But, yeah, I mean, the extended cut is not much worth it. The picture quality should have been a hell lot better considering it's fucking, well, I should know, 20th fuck phase. And as for the film itself, to sort of explain, watching this film again, I understood more what people were saying when they were complaining about this movie. Seeing it a second time, it was much more noticeable. And I can understand now why people hate this film. And that's sad for me to say. First off, it's sad for me to say because I fucking was done whole about it in my first review. And it's rare for me to do that because, believe me, I've seen Dark Knight Rises more than once. And I've seen fucking Machete and Predators and Dark Knight Rises. I said that right. Prometheus, fucking... You know, you go down the list. I've seen them more than once. I, all my other reviews... I remember I reviewed Cop Out once... And I delete that review because I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. That's the only time. Cop out. That's the only time. If I delete any other videos, it's because of, you know, copyright. Uh, copyright. But that's one of the only ones I did because of I changed my, my mind on it. Cop out? Spendables 2 is still up, but even that one, I was like, I'm not sure. Transformer 3, I was like all over the place. And this film. It's it's rare for me to do that, but that's the part that's the point of my channel is I'm going to be honest and watching it again. Bruce Willis, even when he's slumming it, I can watch Bruce Willis. Like I can watch Bruce Willis in fucking Hudson Hawk. I still like Hudson Hawk. I didn't want. I, I like the whole nine yards. For crying out loud, I like hell. I saw the Last Stand again. Still really enjoy the Last Stand. Bullet head still sucks ass. But I don't mind Stallone in it. But the bullet hit still sucks ass. Even in shitty Stallone films. Like, I hate Driven. But I like Stallone in it. I fucking hate... Uh, Judge Dredd. Like, Stallone and like 50-50 on. Assassins. Not the best film. But I like Stallone. This one... I can see more clearly now why people go... Well, he's not really playing John McClane. I can see that more now watching this again. The reason I, I don't hate the film is because even when Bruce Willis is slumming it, I can watch Bruce Willis because I like Bruce Willis. I don't mind Jai Courtney. Um, I don't mind some of the action pieces. The action set pieces, I don't mind. I don't mind the bit where they're jumping out the window and they're going through scaffold after scaffold. It's over the top. It's unrealistic. But I had fun with it. I had fun. I like the shot where they jump out the window and Bruce Willis gives the middle finger to the bitch lady who crashes his helicopter and they slam down. They use actual stuntmen and stuff to do that shot. But I like that shot on the helicopter. I like that shot. I mean, that's a shot you can't do for real because it really jeopardizes the stuntmen. But I like that shot, you know. Um, and it's... There are a couple moments like I like what Bruce Willis tells his kid that you know, that I do love you, and this stuff. There, so there's stuff I do like. I don't hate the film, but watching this film again was hard. The plot does suck ass. The script by Skippy, for the Peter Bear Jelly motherfucker, Skip Woods, is a terrible writer. I like the film, first film he did, Thursday. But he is a terrible writer. Skip Woods, and now he's writing the fucking new Schwarzenegger film 10, or things called another fucking title. I forget what the hell it was. Uh, Skip Woods retire. John Moore, the fucking behind the scenes, he just seems like a fucking dumbass. You know, behind the scenes, like, oh yeah, fucking awesome, yeah, yeah, we got it. And, oh, I wanted to shoot this film handheld. Uh, we gotta be inside Die Hard. And we, we gotta, yeah. what the fuck did he say? 
oh, we gotta do handheld and, and people are realistic. It's not realistic. No one is moving like this the whole fucking time. If the human being moved like this all the time, you would have a headache every three minutes. Okay, people do not talk like this. I do not look at someone and then I'm doing this. Like, if the camera is my eyes, I don't do this. Unless there's something seriously wrong with me. I have fucking... I'm not even making a joke of this, but if I have Parkinson's or sclerosis and shit. Like, Richard Pryor had you know, sclerosis or Michael J. Fox. And I'm not making a joke on that, but which is sad that they have that. And really enough, I saw, it's cool though, Michael J. Fox actually has a new TV show. That's pretty cool. But no one, like, that's the only time when you talk to someone, you're very straight. The plot is horrendous. Even the plot in Live Here, Die Hard is hell lot better, because I like the cyber terrorism angle. I don't like fucking Timothy Oliphant, fantastic. But the cyber terrorism, I like the fact that he could do it on a computer and could change it so that all these cars converge and makes for some interesting action scenes. And Len Wiseman, I his Total Recall remake still sucked, and I saw that more than once. To give it a fair shade, it sucked ass the second time. Just as much as the first time. But he knew how to direct action scenes in Live Free or Die Hard. He really did. And the plot is more interesting. And Justin Lawn. I like more than Jared Courtney. I don't mind Jared Courtney, but Justin Long just had more of a personality. I don't mind Jared Courtney, but he doesn't have much of a personality. And the script in this is fucking shitty. John McClane does not have much funny stuff to say. I still don't mind the business where he punches someone and he goes, You, you think you understand? You really think I understand what you're saying? And But it's nothing really clever or witty. It's nothing. Even a fingernail close, not even a an inch on the ass of any of the three original diehards. They blow the shit out of this movie. Out of his ass. It just. John McClane says the same thing. I'm on vacation four times or so. Okay, we did it. It wasn't funny the first time. They steal life and live for your hard where they go. Was that your best shot during the card? Like, why did you steal that line from Live Free or Die Hard? What the fuck? Moscow. I'm sorry. I have nothing against Moscow, but it's a boring place to put your movie in. It just reminds me of Steven Seagal direct to DVD shit. Where he goes overseas to Budapest or uh, fucking Buda, whatever, or some other fucking name of a country and I can't barely pronounce. And the villain with the fucking tap dancing shit. Tap dance to hell. John Moore is a hack of a director. The Omen remake sucked. Fucking Max Payne in my ass. Sucked ass. Fly the Phoenix. Fly into the fucking sun. Behind Enemy Lines with Owen Wilson I still like. And sad to say, I could say I like Behind Enemy Lines probably more than this. And that's sad. That's fucking sad. That one, I thought. <laughs> Again, I don't. I, Bruce Willis, even when he's slumming it, which I'm like, Bruce Willis, come on, you should have known something was up. I know they're making another one. They're saying the Tokyo, and I'm like, fuck, yeah. Go back into the John McClane in a box, you know, in some type of box, like claustrophobic scenario or something, and. Get a better writing director. Get Rennie Harlan back. Get John McTiernan when he gets out of jail. Or fuck, get someone else. I mean, no, get fucking Stallone to direct the new Die Hard film, and have him be the villain. I wouldn't mind that shit. Like even the first Expendables film, it has problems with the shady cam and shit. But I saw Expendables and I still enjoy it. The first one, but this one, like the first. 15 minutes, I'm like, man, uh, this is really boring. And the shit with the Russian cab driver is not really that funny with the French Sinatra shit. 
and then the car chase, which again they spend like half hour featured and oh yeah, you know, hopefully if we get this right, it'll be a car chase for the ages. Maybe it could have been if you didn't shoot it in your dumbass handheld format. John Moore, you fucking hack. Please get the fuck out of Hollywood. Will you douche battery? Of epic proportions. Get the fuck out of here. Please retire. Never make a movie again. Michael Davis, who does shoot him up. The director who did the tournament. Pierre Morel, who did Tate and From Paris of Love. Let them have a crack and die. Not this fucking idiot. When you're shaking the camera and sometimes I'm like, wait, what the fuck's going on after fucking rewinding it again? You know what you could have done? Learn from Ronan. You ever seen Ronan with Robert De Niro? I believe that was John Frankenheimer. How they handled those car chase scenes. There's bits of it I like. I like when the big fucking thing crashes into this damn truck and it flips over. I like some of the practical stuff. But... Dude, there are a lot of car chases that are, are better than this. It's not one for the ages. Hell, the car chases die hard with a vengeance. With a taxi cab. I said, through the park. Way better. Hell, the car chase and live for a die hard where they're being chased by the helicopter and they fuck up the guy in the helicopter and they get in the whole garage and then he drives their car into a fucking... Helicopter, like, yeah, like Live Free or Die Hard. That's a film that I saw again and again, and I still enjoy. I hate to be the only font, but I still enjoy. Yeah, I like the, and that's an unrated version that I actually thought, I actually heard Motherfucker at the end. There's some stuff added that I liked. That's an unrated version that I don't mind. This one is, this is thin cut is bullshit cut, because I didn't see shit. I didn't see much of shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... This one, it was it was kind of tough to sit through the second time around. Especially when I'm, I'm sitting at home and I'm, I'm thinking back to the other Die Hard films. And I saw Live For Your Die Hard in a theater and loved it. Then I see it at home and I still enjoy the film. I did a review for the film. And hell, I've this is a film I've defended. I defended this film. When I talked to John Zero Cool and I talked to my friend Efri. Hell, I did another video with Efri talking about it. It was a couple parts. Defending the film. And watch this film again. I just feel like an asshole for defending this film so much. Because at best it's a time waster. But Red with Bruce Willis is much better than this film. The Fifth Element. Last Boy Scout blows his shit out of this movie. Away. Blows it away. <laughs> now, now I want to see Demolition Man. Just to fucking... It's just really sad that this year of 2013, I mean, this is a film I really wanted, and I did, and then I saw it the second time, it just, The Last Stand, I still like, especially the second half, the first half is a little slow, Bolt to the Head sucked, and this one is a, is a time waste but still disappointment, in fact, I probably put The Last Stand over this film, because that one, seeing it again, didn't make me have this feeling, like this one did, it just, and again, I can watch this film. But I even though the fucking car chase scene is this could have been handled so so much better if you had a competent director. There's bits of it I like. I don't mind Jack Courtney, but I think hell Justin Long was better in Life Your Die Hard. He was funny and had personality. Bruce Willis, like I don't know, he needs him or someone else needs to come up with better dialogue for John McClane. And. There's a scene where he's hanging off the helicopter and it's CGI. Watching that, I'm like, oh my god. I didn't even notice that in the theater. It's much more CGI when he when he lets go and when he's flying through the glass. I like the second part because it's an actual person. But the beginning when he's like 
a hundred feet away slowly. Like he, he's a hundred feet away slowly, Nolan. And then it's like, okay, now here's there's the CGI, and now here's the real John McClane. I'm like, oh shit. Man. I just I like the idea behind it, hanging on to something, and being thrown into the light glass, but it just. <laughs> God damn it. This film surely did not survive second viewing. I mean, I, I again, I don't hate the film. I didn't watch it as a time waster, but it's definitely not up to snuff with a Die Hard film. And uh, let me put it this way I am not defending this film anymore. I, I can watch this film as a time waster, I can watch the film and go, eh. But that's what I'm probably gonna put like review slash rant because it's a lot of me ranting, but it's also me reviewing. And it's this is probably one of those films I can't put in good conscience in my top ten or anything. It just because it just wouldn't feel right. I just and this is a film I know I was defending so long to people and you know someone was like oh since cinema snob hate it's like oh this poison hate it. I didn't I don't hate the film, but it, it is a big disappointment watching this again. I'm like man. I don't watch the three Diary films ten times in a row and not give a shit. Live for a Diary Hard, I can watch it again and again. I'm like, okay, oh. Hell, I enjoy Indian Jones and Kim and Crystal Skull. I can watch that again and again. Hell, I reviewed that. But this one. Damn. I think this is one of those, those few films that watching a second time just did not hold up for me. That doesn't really happen to me as that often. The CGI Ninja Turtles film it did. Spinables 2 it did. Transformers 3 it did. Cop Out it did. Really enough, three of them are like fucking films with Bruce Willis in it. <laughs> What's next? I watch G.I. Joe 2, and then I fucking love it, and then I hate it. Or Red 2. Or... I know one thing. I'm definitely going to think more and more about a film before I review it because it's kind of embarrassing. But, yeah. John McClane's dialogue, I can't even think of anything that was remotely memorable dialogue-wise. I mean, you look at Die Hard 2. What sets up the metal detective first? The lead in your ass or the shit in your brains? <laughs> or, uh, Even Live Free or Die Hard, you just kill her Helicopter with the car. I was out of bullets. This one. I can't really think of any. So, yeah, I mean. John Moore, fuck yourself. Skip Woods, fuck yourself. Bruce Willis, I, I can't. Obviously, he's got to take some of the blame. He's got to, but I just. I think you just need to give him a, a writer, a director who's going to fucking keep his ass. Like, unbreakable. M. Night Shyamalan at that time could do that with Bruce Willis. He can't do it anymore, but. Like, John McTiernan and Rennie Harlan for the diary. I mean, he, he definitely needs that. I just. <laughs> I know it's weird, but I. And the Blu-ray, the picture quality, again, maybe it's just me, but I know it's like grain, it's pretty fucking grainy pixelation, especially getting to the Chernobyl third act. Uh, the extended cut is not worth a fuck. Believe me, if there's other noises I can't fucking remember, this is just... Yeah, let's watch this again. And believe me, no one changed my mind on this. Because no one does, you know. I'm the type of, again, I'm the weird guy that does stuff, but, but yeah, the, the general consensus of this movie, I, there's a lot of movies I've defended, I still defend, this one, I, I'm not defending anymore, hell, I, I will defend Cyborg with Van Damme, to, and Hard Target, and fucking Cobra, and Rambo 3, but, Dire 5, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to say a good day to die hard. I don't want to call this Die Hard 5 anymore. Good day to die hard. Which is a shitty title. 
it's up there with uh, Cop Out, Expendables 2, and Transformers 3, where I, I did look for a Cop Out, because, hey, Kevin Smith, I like, Bruce Willis, cool, and Did re remember I did a review for Cop Out and my friend Mike is like oh, I'm sorry Matt because he did a review his review's still up mine's not because I was so embarrassed I was so embarrassed from the review I did fuck anyway yeah I mean it, it was boring at times and I get why people hate this film now I really do again I don't who knows I say I don't hate it. Maybe by the end of the year, I'll start hating it. But I just, as of right now, there's a couple scenes I enjoy. Even when Bruce Willis is slumming it, I can still watch watch him even slumming it. But, yeah, this is not up to diehard standards. It really isn't. And, again, yeah, this comes from a guy that likes Indiana Jones and Keaton Crystal Skull. This comes from a guy who still likes Battle Los Angeles and fucking Cowboys and Aliens and Green Lantern. So... And I still don't like, you know, some popular... But, yeah. Anyway. That's uh, sort of my Blu-ray review rant on A Good Day to Die Hard. Thanks for watching. Take care. And now I'm very embarrassed. John Moore. Punch him in the face. If you see John Moore, Steve Woods, punch him in the face. No, not really, no. I don't issue any death threats for... It's only a movie. But John Moore, please retire. Please retire from Hollywood forever. Steve Woods, retire from Hollywood forever. Please. Pretty please. John Moore, you stupid fucking... You did, yeah. Uh, do it handheld. I want the whole movie handheld because it's more realistic. Really. Then your reality must be different from mine. Because my reality is not like this. All the time. Yeah, head hate all the time. Maybe yeah, well, that was his problem. He had a headache the whole movie. No one knows. Anyway, thanks for watching and take care. Later.